So here's a quick walkthrough of Euphony. I'm using the stylus software. There's a number of different options in here. Uh, this is this is a stylus one. As you can see here, I'm actually on a desktop. I can control my server from any anything that can run a web browser. There is also an app. Here I'm just controlling it from a desktop and there's no other connections. This is simply going through the web. Uh, I have licensed this one, so obviously if I click on this, you would see the license. You have a number of options up here and I'll just see if I can take you through some of these. So audio systems, like I said before, I'm running Stylus. Uh, obviously I could restart that, I, I don't need to right now. This is active, you can see it's got a white box around it. This will run Rune, um, so you've got Rune on its own, Rune with HQ player, Stylus EP and Squeeze Light. I'm not playing around with Rune at all. Uh, HQ player embedded, so Euphony system runs only HQ embedded. Use Rune to manage your music library and control this player. Again, not doing that. HQ player is interesting. So when you get the Euphony license, you have the HQ plugin enabled in trial mode, which means you can run HQ player underneath stylus and you can upsample. So we'll talk about that later. But what that allows you to do is get your music upsampled into uh, DSD. And it has an awful lot of settings where you can play around with filters and so on. Uh, which should change the sound and you can see here more uh, options here including things like airplay which is very interesting so you can stream sound from your ios devices or itunes i just go down to uh, settings uh, interestingly enough here and i didn't realize this you've actually got quite a few options here now you can see here i've got my Amoreno, this is the one that works with my DAC. This is what I've, what I've got set at the moment. My DAC has to be on for this to actually show up. Otherwise you'll get nothing. So bear that in mind if you're setting this up. But also uh, you can see it's it's found two UPnP servers, which I didn't realize it could do this. So I can now output to my home cinema, which is my Marantz AV8802, which works perfectly. If I click on this, it will the Marantz will turn itself on and then it will start playing music. Uh, and this is my Panasonic television, uh, which I would say is not very useful given the speakers that are in that. And down here you can see the HQ player upsampling for stylus. If I tick this, this is going to apply whatever upsampling I've got. So DSD256 is what my DAC can handle. Uh, there are lots and lots of settings here. You can see these extreme slow roll-offs at all sorts. Um, DSD noise. I don't know what half of these things are doing at the moment. Um, you can see you can also uh, upsample PCM. Now, one of the things you do get is uh, in Cobas you will get much better than CD quality quite frequently. So I guess I'm not sure what will happen if you set the PCM, but maybe if it, if you match the PCM levels, it'll just leave the signal alone. So back to library, um, and up here you can see I've got my choice of Tidal, Cobas, uh, you notice Amazon Music's not here, I'm not sure why that isn't supported yet. I know Auralic have finally integrated Amazon Music uh, and there's no Apple Music either, so just be aware of that. Now, I dropped Tidal, uh, I think for reasons which are quite controversial, I know MQA is one of the big talking points at the moment. I've moved to Cobas because I'm nervous about MQA. I also don't have MQA capable kit, um, so if you're not sure what MQA is, uh, quick search online and you'll find the uh, the sort of processing I think you would almost call it applied to your music. Uh, so if I click Cobas, anyone familiar with Cobas will um, be able to notice a lot of similarities here with what the Cobas app will do for you. So first of all you've got obviously the albums in front of you and if I click on this um, you've got the typical playlist option. So here you can see and these are Cobas play playlists so I've got pop newcomers and so on. Um, if I click on one of these, you can see here I've got all the tracks. Uh, now, what happens here, and I find this a bit annoying, these, these tracks will obviously they'll come over the top of these and then I'll have to click this again and it stays there with these slightly greyed out, I think. I, I, I'm not sure about this functionality. It doesn't feel very natural. It's It seems okay at the moment with the... Um, being on the PC but when I'm working on the iPad uh, sometimes you don't get the tracks here I think maybe it's just buffering um, so you have to wait a while 
But anyway, not, not a major complaint. So here you've got the typical Cobas. You've got new, um, so if I, obviously that's new playlists, featured, that's featured playlists, or I could do albums, so featured albums, new albums, or I could search Cobas, and you've also got favourites. So if I put in the killers, uh, you can see here the blue, uh, it's auto searching for me. So here's the search functionality within Kobo. So you can see here I've got a uh, search and then I've gone looked at artists, albums, etc. Uh, what happens as you start typing, you can see this blue uh, starts searching. So obviously as you type every letter, it sort of restarts the search. Um, and here you can see that I said the killers. If I click on that, um, you can see a lot of the material. I'm scrolling down, so this is quite easy on the on the PC. Um, also on the right here, you can see H. Whenever you see H next to a album, it means it's in high resolution, as in more than CD quality. And if I was to click play, um, this is now playing. Down here, you can see these little blue dots, um, just showing that the music's working. And interestingly enough, you can see PCM 2448. PCM 2448. So if you are up sampling, uh, you will see it going from its original to something different, i.e. DSD. Um, and there's a few other bits and pieces you can do here, like random, single, and so on. If I click on this, I get the description of the track, who the killers are, um, which is good. Uh, there's a lot of links to Last FM. Uh, I think if I click on this, I'll show you. Yeah. It does actually take you, just accept that, it does actually take to Last FM. I'm not sure if that was working when I had that on my iPad, um, or it, I think it was using the iPad app. I don't don't know that this link works in the iPad app. Um, but anyway, that's, that's some useful stuff to know. Let's go back into the settings here. And um, one of the other things you can do here is check your CPU temperatures. So you can see here, I'm running very low, like 29, 30. I mean, this is well, well within limits. Um, and CPU utilization, I mean, practically none. Um, also memory, so I'll show you settings for this later, but you're able to move the tracks into memory before you play them. Now this just shows how little power is required when you're running a, um, a, a straight stream from the, from the internet. But this will change completely if I upsample. So, let me just go back into my library settings, sorry, um, and my HQ player settings. Now, what I have here, and this was borrowed from someone, uh, this, this is extreme linear phase single pass polyphase, as in poly XTR. Goodness knows what that is. I'm really not sure. Um, minimum phase extreme polyphase uh, and seventh order adaptive ASDM7. So whatever these are, I'm not sure. However, uh, some of these DSD settings really, really, really tax your power and will seriously add a lot of heat to your processor. So if I click that now, um, activating HQ player. Now this is the test version of HQ player. So after 30 minutes, this will stop working. And I think you have to reload the track. So it's not difficult, um, but obviously supporting these smaller companies, it would be good to actually buy it. Um, yes, so, so now you can see here I've got DSD256 being run. Now this is quite a heavy filter. And if I go to temperature CPU, um, you will watch these. See this? So now I've got major climb. And down here, you can see there's a lot of work being done by these cores. Um, sort of 50% on these. So starting to tax. Now if you had DSD512, which I'm not using here, I would expect to see this going up even further. So we're now starting to talk about some serious CPU usage. Um, but worse than that, we're talking about heat. Now what was really interesting here was uh, yesterday I was listening to this and I had exactly these settings on. I'm keeping an eye on this. And uh, the sound was sounding pretty good. I mean, I, honestly, from an AV perspective, I couldn't tell you if it was better, but it sounded fine. Um, and what was happening was over the course of about 10 minutes, my sound started sounding dull again, and I was thinking, what on earth is going on with this? It's, it's really odd. Like, I started to notice uh, that the sound quality was like dropping off. So I thought, well, I'd better go back to my 
uh, PCM, I'm going to turn this DSD up something off. I mean, I'm, at the moment, I'm just messing around with it rather than doing any serious testing, um, only to discover that when I loaded this, all my core temperatures were over 100 degrees C and my computer was extremely hot and getting hotter. Um, so I immediately shut the whole thing down. Um, since then, I've discovered that you have to actually go into the BIOS and I'll cover that in a later date. You have to go into the BIOS and change the core temperatures. Um, sorry, not change the core temperatures, change the the settings to basically declock the motherboard as in make it slower. Uh, now, this is really crazy because obviously you, you think you'd want to do the opposite. Remember what we were saying about making the most powerful chips possible in order to get, get the best sound quality. Uh, well, this is quite the opposite. What, what we're actually saying here is the heat is a big problem and I'm going to have to going to slow these processes down. Actually, if you look at this down here, I think one of these just went red um, just on the CPU utilization. Now, what I've done in the... Um, let's see what's that do. I think that's just... Yeah, that's the tracks just stopped, which is why it's gone down to zero. Now, one of the things I did was set thermal limits in the uh, motherboard. I would strongly recommend before you do anything, I mean anything about DSD up sampling, um, because if you're not aware of this, you might end up running it and then goodness knows you could fry something. Um, make sure that you've set your thermal limits. Now I've set mine to 85 degrees C. I think you could possibly run higher than that. But as I say, when I got up to that kind of 100 degrees C and I'm not even sure what, what these go up to, it seemed to be all the way across here was 100 degrees C, so I don't know if it was even higher. Uh, at that point, the computer was still running, but the sound quality was absolutely appalling. So um, be careful of this. And uh, that's just a bit of information from what I've learned.